Okay, so this is part two of TSOP Flashing Explained. Uh, so uh, here's a setup of everything you're going to need. So uh, first off, you're going to need a soft modded Xbox. If you have an Xbox and it is not soft modded, um, you're a step behind. So um, go ahead and soft mod your Xbox. You're also going to need a controller and all the hookups in order to actually use your Xbox. Um, next, you're going to need a soldering iron and some solder. Um, so we'll be using that to actually um, disable the right protection on the TSOP chip itself. Um, here is some stranded wire. This is optional. Um, it, some people like to use it, some people don't, so I'm just including it. Um, so what we're doing is we're going to be bridging two small solder joints on the motherboard itself. Um, and that's going. And that, what that does is disables the right protection. So some people like to just put a blob of solder on the two points. Um, some people like to use a little bit of wire. It's really up to you. Um, I'll do it both ways just to show you. Um, but single single core wire, um, if you can get it small enough, it might work. But um, most people don't have that, so um, just a, a stranded stranded core wire will work fine. You just need it's like a single strand of out of the uh, wire. Um, and you're going to need. Um, a Torx, T1, a Torx 20 and Torx 10 um, bit. I'm just going to be using the driver and the two bits. And then you're also going to need a copy of uh, what's called Hexen. So this is just like a utility disk. Um, it installs uh, soft mods. Uh, it TSOP flashes. It can flash mod chips, all kinds of stuff. So uh, specifically, this is um, a shambles edit. Um, I'll, I'll include a link in the description of where you can uh, download this and, and burn it. Um, but what this one, what this disc does is it can flash every type of TSOP chip there is, or every brand of TSOP chip, I should say. Um, and we'll go over that in just a minute. Um, depending on the type of drive that you have in your Xbox, some of them don't like to read DVD plus R's. So I'm um, just kind of have to maybe burn to a different type of disc, maybe a DVD minus R or a CDR, um, it just kind of depends on um, how picky your Xbox is. So um, go ahead and download that and burn it. And so th this is just a, this is like the bare minimum of everything you need in order to TSOP flash your Xbox. Uh, not a lot of stuff uh, that you need. So um, real quickly, I'm gonna go over the uh, different brands of TSOPs that you will encounter in an Xbox and why that's important. So really quickly, let's go over the uh, different brands of, t of TSOP chips that you encounter um, in an Xbox. Um, and uh, they can pretty much be uh, divided into three different groups. So uh, let's just say, this is called Group 1. Group 1 has uh, the Hynix, Hyundai, and ST brand TSOPs. Uh, group 2 is uh, the Winbond TSOP. And Group 3 is the Sharp TSOP. So uh, with uh, Group 1, uh, those three chips have the same flashing method or um, the same flashing tool, I guess you could say. Um, all three chips use the same uh, flashing tool and they get um, they get the same treatment pretty much when you flash it. Um, there's nothing different between the, those three brands. Now uh, group two with the Winbond brand chip, um, it actually has its own flashing method or its own uh, flashing tool uh, separate just for Winbond chips. It's um, specially designed for Winbond chips. Uh, if you use a different tool to flash your wind bond, uh, you run the risk of um, uh, getting a bad flash and thus bricking your Xbox. So, uh, wind bond has its own tool, and then Sharp kind of has its own special category. It's it's set out from the rest because it's so so weird. Um, Sharp does have its own tool, and it also has its own soldering method. Um, it's strange. Um, not hard, it's just strange and it's specific to sharp chips. And then of course if you have a uh, version 1.6 Xbox you won't have a TSOP, you actually have a chip, uh, an Xbox brand uh, QFP package here that says Zyklops on it and thus there is no TSOP, you can't flash it. Um, you just have to get a, another Xbox that's not a version 1.6 in order to perform the TSOP flash. So before we actually perform the TSOP uh, we have to open the Xbox up and identify uh, what we're working with here. So um, go ahead and take out both the hard drive and the DVD drive. And um, I've also taken out the uh, both the power cable and uh, data cables.
for the uh, DVD drive just to give us a better view here. Um, so first off, let's look at the power cable that comes from the uh, power supply into the motherboard. So if you have one that looks like this and it, and it has just a single row of wires on a connector, then you automatically know you have a either a version 1 or a 1.1 uh, Xbox. And that automatically tells you that you have a 1 megabyte TSOP in that Xbox. Now if you happen to have an Xbox like this one we're working on in this video and it has two rows of wires like this, then you know that it's either a 1.2 through 1.6. And you automatically know that um, it's going to have a 256 kilobyte uh, TSOP, unless it's a 1.6 in which it has no TSOP at all. Now let's move over to where the TSOP is actually located on the motherboard and we need to identify uh, the brand name of it. So in this particular Xbox that we're working on in the video, uh, we have a Winbond chip. It doesn't say Winbond on it, you just have to know by the logo, but it's, it's just got the globe with the W in it. Um, that just means Winbond. So just uh, make a note of what kind of, uh, what kind of chip you have. And then finally we move over to the version 1.6 Xbox and uh, again like I said earlier in the video if you see uh, this QFP package that has that has a Xbox brand on it and it uh, says Cyclops on it um, that you know indicates you have a version 1.6 Xbox uh, there is no TSOP and it can't be flashed if you if you do wish to TSOP flash an Xbox um, you have to get a new Xbox or at least get a new a new motherboard um, so that's the unfortunate truth about the version 1.6 so now we know that in this particular Xbox we're working on, it has a 256 kilobyte BIOS, and the BIOS brand is Winbind. So now that we've identified the size TSOP that we have, and what brand it is, uh, now we need to disable write protection on the TSOP, because by default it is write protected, and you can't erase it and you can't flash it until we disable that. And in order to disable it, um, I have to do a little bit of soldering. Uh, so there are um, two solder bridges we need to make. Um, so if you have a one megabyte TSOP, there's going to be one on the on the front or the top of the motherboard, and then you would flip it over and then make a solder bridge on the back of the motherboard. If you have a 256 kilobyte TSOP, both of the solder bridges are here on the top or the front of the motherboard. So so quickly, I'll show you uh, the, where the two solder bridges are on a uh, one megabyte. A TSOP that we have to make and where they're located and then um, I'll show you where they are on a 256 kilobyte TSOP and then I'll actually perform the soldering so that you can see kind of how to do it. Okay so here we have a motherboard with a one megabyte TSOP and uh, as you can see here where I'm pointing with this tool um, you can see the uh, the two very small points that have to be soldered together um, to uh, disable write protection. And I've, I've just uh, put a, a red box on there. Uh, it's got the uh, the white lettering in there to, as the indicator, kind of show you where that is. And it's also got the uh, the two uh, points that we have to solder together. And as you can see, that's uh, right beside the LPC, and it's right below the TSOP chip on the uh, top of the motherboard. And now we move over here to the uh, the back of the motherboard, um, and then, uh, you can see the LPC here for reference. And then, right here in this uh, in this red box, you can see the two um, the two solder points that we have to bridge together, and also the um, the white lettering or the indicator of where that is located. And uh, this is the second point that we have to solder together in order to uh, disable write protection on a, a motherboard with a one megabyte TSOP. Okay, now let's let's take a look at the uh, the two solder points you have to solder on a motherboard that has a 256 kilobyte um, TSOP chip. And uh, just for reference, here's the LPC port. Um, and what we're gonna be soldering first is are, uh, these two points right here where it says uh, R7D10. It's gonna be these two tiny points right here, very small. And then if we move up a little bit um, here beside the TSOP chip itself, we have um, R7D1 and it's going to be these two um, small solder joints right here. Again very small. Um, what we need to do is bridge those two solder joints and what that will do is disable uh, write protection on the TSOP chip and then we can 
um, write a custom BIOS to that. So that's what we're going to do. I've just got my soldering iron here. Um, honestly, there's no really easy way to do this. Um, you can. There's a couple of methods. You can either just um, bridge the two points together with a solder bridge, or you can use a very small piece of wire. Um, I'll do both, just to kind of show you how it works. Um, but um, since we are small, soldering such a small uh, point here, um, there's no real easy way to do that. So um, one way to do it is just um, put some solder, a blob of solder, on your iron here, and just kind of get a blob on there and just touch it to the pads and uh, kind of hope that it bridges. You might have to do it a couple of times to get it to bridge. And actually that worked the first time. Let me check that out. Yeah, so that's a bridge. Um, then if we move up here to the other one, um, again, I have my uh, a piece of wire here with the, uh, the you know it's not a single co it's not a solid core it's the uh, um, threaded core type wire and then what I've done is I just took out a a single thread of that and what we'll be doing is just soldering that piece of wire on there and then clip it off so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a very small amount of flux on here just to help that wire stick on there. And then, I'll take my wire, place it on there. Take that on there. I'll just get a Q-tip and some alcohol just to clean that flux off because it's kind of it's kind of causing a glare on the camera. So as you can see, the wire is soldered on there, and then we'll just take my wire snips here and snip that off, and there we go. So. Um, over it, the idea is pretty simple. Uh, you just kind of have to have some patience and some steady hands to to solder those really tiny points. Um, but at the moment, our TSOP is now um, right uh, right enabled. The uh, right protection has been um, turned off pretty much. So again, you have to have this uh, R7D1 point here, and then move down, and we have to have the R7 D10 point soldered there. Uh, pretty much the same idea as the uh, as a motherboard with a one megabyte TSOP. It's just that they're the two points are in different locations. Um, overall, you still have to solder those two points together on on the motherboard if you want a TSOP flash. All right, and now we come to the part where we have a uh, a sharp brand TSOP, and I actually I don't have one to actually show you on footage. Um, but I just have to explain it to you real quickly, and uh, here's a diagram to help explain that. Um, as you can see here on the uh, on the top of the motherboard where the sharp T soft is actually located, um, we have the uh, the two solder points that we, we would normally bridge together. Um, but in this case, we just need to solder two wires and just have them separate from each other for now. And then on the back of the motherboard where the other two um, points are that you would normally solder, you would solder those as normal. You just solder them together. And create that bridge and then we also need to solder a jumper wire from from one point on the uh, LPC to uh, another point uh, right above the uh, capacitor C7R1 and what this does is it just it provides an extra 5 volts uh, to the chip itself because it's required in order to get it to flash properly so what you would do once you have this all soldered together um, like it is in the diagram once you get to the very last stage of where you would actually you know, commit to uh, flashing the TSOP, you would hold the two wires together that you soldered on the top of the motherboard, flash the TSOP, the Xbox would power off, and then you would let those two wires uh, separate again or let them go once the flash is complete. And then you would uh, desolder that extra jumper wire on the bottom. 
it's a little bit of extra work, but it is required to get a sharp T-SOP to solder properly. And unfortunately, I don't have one to show you here on footage because um, it is a little bit different and I, I would like to show you guys, but I just don't have one. Um, so this is the best I can do with what I've got. Um, and overall, it's a pretty simple idea. You just have to make sure you do it right because sharp T-SOPs are a little bit um, weird and they do require their own, uh, their own flashing method. Now that we've got the right protection uh, effectively turned off, uh, we can go ahead and uh, install the motherboard back into the Xbox case and hook it all back up and we can continue with the flash process. Now I want to go ahead and let everyone know that there is a small risk involved while T-SOP flashing. Um, during the process, if your Xbox loses power and the T-SOP flash was incomplete, uh, you are guaranteed to get a bricked Xbox and the only way to revive it is with a mod chip. So keep away your pets, children, don't do this during thunderstorms, and keep an eye out for suspicious looking banana peels. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and continue. So here we are at the final stage of the flashing process, and uh, this is, uh, I've got Hexen booted up on the Xbox here. And we want to go down to option number three, it says uh, TSOF and shipped Xbox tools. Can open that up. And uh, the very first option you see, it says instructions. So if you want to open that up and read the instructions, it tells you exactly what to do. Um, this is very simple, very user friendly. Um, just look at option 3.2 and 3.3. .3. Option 3.2 says mod chip slash TSOP flash, not wind bond. So you would use this for Hynix, Hyundai, and ST chips only. Um, you would not use it for wind bond and you would not use it for sharp. The next option down, wind bond, it says wind bind or sharp flash. And that's only used for those two chips, wind bind or sharp. If you use it for any other, any other chip, you'll have problems. So, um, the following instructions are gonna be for people that have Hynix, Hyundai, or ST chips only. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go through the menu just to show you what it's like and what you can expect for those three chips. So I'm going to open that up. Um, it says um, this is for non wind bond chips. Do you want to continue? I'll select yes. And it's going to open up or it's going to load Evolution X. And Evolution X is what is used to actually flash the chip um, when we actually get to that part. Okay, so here's Evolution X loaded up. And this is the tool that we use to flash our TSOP chip. So uh, here, here's the rule. If you have a, uh, a TSOP that is one megabyte in capacity, um, you can pretty much flash any BIOS to it you want because um, Evolution X will resize the BIOS to fit your chip. Um, so you can always flash a smaller BIOS to a larger chip, um, but you cannot flash a larger BIOS to a smaller chip. It doesn't work like that. So for example, the first option says flash a 256K BIOS to a Xbox through from versions 1.0 to 1.5 and yeah you can do that so it would actually resize the BIOS to fit your chip if um, if your chip is a one megabyte chip so we'll just open this up as an example and it gives us some uh, BIOS options so we have individual BIOS uh, X2 4981 and then Evox M8 plus um, and then on the end of these you see it says F and G. F and G refers to the partitions uh, that the BIOS supports. So in the future if you ever want to upgrade your hard drive, which most people do, um, you would want to have an F and a G drive. So I just by default I just always choose F and G just, to, so, just so I can have that option in the future. So all these BIOSes here, these are all 256 kilobytes in size. These are all 256 kilobyte BIOSes. And if I just select one, it's going to say, um, it's going to give us a little dialog box and it's going to say your, the flash type is the brand of TSOP that you have. And in my case, mine is a wind bond. And it says press Y to flash. Now if I do this, it's going to flash my wind bond chip and then it's going to corrupt it and I'll have a dead Xbox. Do not want to do this because this tool is used to flash Hynix, Hyundai, and ST TSOP chips only. If you use this tool to flash a wind bond chip or a sharp chip, uh, you'll break your Xbox, guaranteed. So I'm gonna press B to back out of that. 
I don't want to do that. Um, so let's drop down here and, it's, and it says a flash of 512k BIOS to your TSOC. And the only, the only 512k BIOS that it gives you is X2-5035. So by this point you're asking yourself, well heck, which BIOS do I choose? If I have a one megabyte BIOS, I have so many choices. Well, I just always go with, go with this one, X2-5035. It seems to have the most features. Um, very, it's very customizable as far as um, changing the boot colors and everything. It's a, it's just a great all-around BIOS. So if you have a one megabyte TSOP, uh, I would just say go ahead and choose this one because it's easy to use. But if you want to, you can certainly flash a 256K BIOS to your one megabyte TSOP if that's what you want to do, no problem at all. So what I'm going to do, um, the instructions for people that have the Hynix, Hyundai, and ST chips, these instructions are over. I'm going to move on to people that have a Winbond chip. So I'm going to go down here and select return to main menu. Okay, so we're back here at Hexen, and uh, the following instructions are for, are for people that have a Winbond or Sharp chip. Um, every, everyone else can just ignore this. So. If you have a Winbond or a Sharp chip, go ahead and select option 3.3. It says Winbond or Sharp Flash. And then you have all these options. And all of these BIOSes that you see, so ND BIOS, X2-4981, and then Evox M8 Plus, these are all 256K BIOSes that only work on a Winbond chip. And at the very bottom, we have another option that says Sharp Only. Only use on a Sharp TSOP. So if you have a Sharp TSOP, you would select this option. But both Winbond and Sharp TSOPs use the same tool to flash the uh, the chip. So the interface is the same. It's just if we, get, we have to choose if we have a Winbond TSOP or a Sharp TSOP. So if you have a Sharp TSOP, go ahead and select this option. I have a Winbond TSOP in this Xbox, so I'm going to select uh, this very first one that says uh, ND BIOS 5003.67. So, it says F and G. I want the F and G partitions. Um, you can select F only if you want to, no big deal. But I want F and G because I plan to upgrade the hard drive in this Xbox later on and I want that option to have the F and G partitions. So I'm gonna select this and it just says, make sure you only use it on a Winbond chip. If you don't, it'll, you know, it's, in, it's gonna break. So I'm gonna select yes to proceed. Um, another warning for 1.6 Xboxes that have mod chips. So select yes per to proceed. And this just tells you kind of what to expect in the, uh, in the GUI that's about to load. Um, one thing to remember is when Gen 2 loads up, which is the GUI that flashes our TSOP chip, um, there's like an automatic five second countdown for some reason until it boots from the CD. So to cancel the countdown, just move the D-pad. That's all you gotta do. So we're going to select yes to proceed, and it's going to load up Gen 2. As a heads up to people that have a Winbond or Sharp TSOP, uh, Gen 2, the tool that we use to flash that TSOP, it doesn't like third-party controllers at all. It will most of the time refuse to work with them. So just make sure you've got a first-party controller and you are good to go. So you can see the little countdown that's counting over there on the side. So I'm just going to move the cursor to, to cancel that countdown. And then we're gonna go all the way to the right to where it has Tux the Penguin on it and it says Advanced. So we're gonna select that. And then we're gonna select Flash Menu. And then we're gonna go down here to Hard Drive Flash because the BIOS that we wanna flash is on the hard drive because it was extracted. And then it gives us uh, the BIOS name which is BIOS.bin. So, since we, since we know that this Xbox does have a Winbond chip, we are in the correct flashing tool for Winbond chips. We're gonna go ahead and press A on this and we'll proceed with the flash. So it says flashing, don't turn off your console during this process. If you lose power during this process, you will have a breaked Xbox. So just let it do its thing and the Xbox turns off, then it reboots. And you can see we have a new uh, little load screen when the Xbox turns back on. And you see the flubber machine is now different. 
those are the customizations you can make with a custom BIOS. Very, very cool. So Hexen is still on the DVD drive, so it's going to load up Hexen again, which is what we need to do, because when we flash a custom BIOS to an Xbox, the, the soft mod is still on the hard drive, and custom BIOSes and soft mods don't really mix. Um, it can cause some problems, so what we want to do is use Hexen to delete the soft mod, and we'll just have our custom BIOS run everything in place of the soft mod. So we're going to go down here to option three. And we're going to go down here to uh, chipped X, chip slash flashed Xbox disk upgrades. And there's instructions if you want to read that. And then we want to select uh, option number two that says clean C partition after TSOP flash. So what this is going to do, it's going to delete the salt mod from the C partition. And it's also going to install some very useful tools um, that Hexen comes with on the disk. Um, there's, there's like a, a recovery menu, there's some some applications like DV to Xbox. Um, it'll install the Unleash X dashboard um, back after the soft mod is deleted so you can still use that. Um, it does everything right. You don't have to worry about any, any of your game saves being deleted. You don't have to worry about your games being deleted. It just sets you, sets you up with a new TSOP flash very safe. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And it's going to ask us for a password. So the password is AYBX and then start. Um, and it just says this is going to remove the soft mod and rebuild the C partition. So I'm going to go ahead and select yes. And again it says if your Xbox is actually soft modded and not TSOP flashed and you do this it's going to remove the soft mod and you won't, you won't be able to boot this disk so you want to continue one select yes we know that this one is now uh, TSOP flash so it's going to uh, load up the disk do its thing and we just have to kind of wait on that so after it's done um, deleting the soft mod the last thing I like to do is unlock the hard drive. Um, the reason I do that is because if your hard drive ever, ever fails and you need to replace it, or you just want to like move this hard drive to another Xbox or any, anything like that, it's always good to have an unlocked hard drive. Um, if you have a locked hard drive, you can't do anything with it unless you have the Xbox it goes to. So just for safety purposes, I always unlock the hard drive on a TSOP flashed Xbox. So we're going to hit B, and we're going to go down to the last option that says Disk Lock slash Unlock and EEPROM Backup. So we're going to select yes on or select A on that, and it's going to say exactly what it just said. Um, it says don't use this on a soft modded Xbox because it'll break your soft mod pretty much. It won't let you boot this disk. So continue, yes. And it's going to load up Evox again. So we have the option to lock our disk, unlock it, or back up the EEPROM. So you can back up the EEPROM if you want to, but I just, I'll just i just choose unlock disk. So it's gonna say, it's gonna unlock your Xbox disk. Don't use it on a soft modded Xbox. Unlock disk. And it's gonna ask you one last time, are you sure? So I'm gonna go ahead and select yes. And it's gonna say done. So our uh, hard drive is now unlocked. And we're going to hit B to go all the way back out and return to main menu. Okay, so we're back at the menu and that's it guys, we are done. Our Xbox is TSOP flashed, the soft mod is gone, the hard drive is unlocked, and we're pretty much done here. So, um, Hexen also has some other tools to go ahead and get you started. So, uh, you can install applications, you can install XVMC or pretty much any homebrew application you want to. Um, there are some dashboard tools, the switch dashboards and stuff like that. There are some other tools here, but yeah, we're pretty much done. So that's it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I you know try to make it as, as informative as I can. I know it's gone kind of gone on kind of long as of now, but there's a lot of information to take in. Um, you just have to make sure you do it right and take your time and understand what you're doing. 
Um, hopefully I've made it all clear to you guys. So if you do have any questions, um, you can hit me up on in the comment section or you can hit me up on theoutsidezone.com. Um, a lot of great people on theoutsidezone.com. They, they, they know what they're talking about. So uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have fun.